Hey, hey everyone, welcome to Designing Adobe XD. Uh, I am your host, Talon Wadsworth. I am the lead designer of Adobe XD. And yes, here on a Friday, Adobe Live, if you didn't know, uh, we're actually here every Friday at noon. So welcome, welcome everyone. What's going on everyone? How's everybody doing today? I see a ton of familiar faces, names out there in the chat. Uh, Eric, of course, was, he was, uh, Eric, I think you were like the first one here. <laughs> What's going on, man? Jan, Eric, great to see you in there. Anel, Matthias. Kendra, what's going on? Kendra was surprised to see us here on a Friday. Yes, Kendra, we are here every Friday. We're talking about design. We're talking about Adobe XD. Um, have you, are you are you guys designing an Adobe XD? I'd love to know. Um, if you haven't tried it out, go check it out. You can download it for free. And of course, uh, me as the lead designer, I love hearing your feedback. And of course, I take that feedback and uh, you know put it right back into XD. And that's what the show is all about. The show is really to give you an insight into the way that we as a team kind of work and think you know, maybe tell you some things about UX design. Uh, of course, you can ask questions and we just, we just, we just talk, we talk about design. That's what I love to do. That's why I love my job here at Adobe, making tools. So how's everybody doing today on this Friday? Ahmad, Adriano, uh, Anthony, how are you guys doing? I saw Munir in there uh, earlier. Uh, of course, we have the great Francisco Siller, Paco man here running the show. Um, I am gonna have a guest today. She's running a little late. But we're also going to have uh, another one of our stellar designers from the Adobe XD team on here. Um, excellent. Great to hear, Jan. I'm glad you're kind of kicking things off. Paul, great to see you back uh, after the after last week when we were talking about blend modes. And if you guys haven't checked it out, last week, um, you know, we're doing kind of, kind of some new stuff this year on the Do Designing Adobe XD stream. We're trying some new ideas. Um, last week, we designed a brand new feature for Adobe XD live on stream. Uh, walked through a little bit of the process. Um, we, we designed blend modes. It's an exciting topic. Um, blend modes, definitely a feature that I want to see in XD. So we took a step at designing that. If you want to go check that out, uh, it's archived on our stream on YouTube. And uh, I also sent out a prototype. I'll post that again on my Twitter so you guys can go check out the uh, prototype of the feature that we uh, actually designed live with all of you. All right, looks like Hillary is here, so she'll be joining me here in a second, but today we're gonna be doing some another new new thing. We're gonna be doing some portfolio reviews, which, which I'm really excited about. Uh, I've never done that uh, before here on the stream, so we're actually gonna be taking a look at some of your portfolios, your Behance portfolios, and uh, Hillary and I are going to be uh, providing some, some critique, some feedback on those. Um, of course, hopefully using that to expose some uh, some of the ways that we think about design and think about uh, UX and experience design in general. So uh, pretty excited to bring you that. Uh, Jason, how's it going? We'll say hi as I'm stalling as Hillary's walking into the studio. Uh, this is the, Hillary hasn't been in this studio. She was on, you were on the last stream. Yeah. One of, a while ago in the old studio. All right, excellent. But here, <laughs> getting all set up. Um, yeah, late breaking guests. Uh, I, I sort of I sort of sprung this on her earlier today, uh, <laughs> so she's getting her computer all squared away, and then we get going. Oh no, I'm sorry. Hopefully you're feeling a little better. So, Eric, if you want to be reviewed, definitely submit, and we will definitely uh, review your portfolio. We're going to be doing more of this. If you guys are kind of digging this, any of the new sort of content that we're doing, let me know. Because oh, there we are. Paco's fixing the the the, the frame. <laughs> Hillary. Glasses because I can't really read the comments. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> oh no, they're at my desk. All right. <laughs> no, it's all right. I'll cover the comments. Okay. You focus on the feedback. Okay. All right, Hillary. How's it going? Good. How are you? Good. Thanks, everyone. This is Hillary Neymar. Uh, uh, we'll have the lower thirds on there. Paco's got one ready for us, I'm sure, when he sits down again. But Hillary is a stellar senior designer on the Adobe XD product. Uh, she's working on something really exciting right now. Actually, that's why she's late. Um, I don't know if we can tell you all exactly what it is, but it's a really exciting workflow set of features. I don't know, it's pretty, pretty exciting. So yeah. welcome, Hillary, to the stream. I'm thanks, excited. thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. Wow, well, uh, thanks for like agreeing to it last second. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, all right. So today, well, actually, first off, let, tell me, tell, tell everyone here on the stream a little bit about yourself. Um, uh, you're real, you're pretty. You're still pretty new to the team. Um, yeah, to the I think Adobe XD team. around six months, maybe a little bit yeah, more now. Yeah. yeah. So I joined from GoPro. Mm -hmm. um, was working on primarily 
uh, the software side of GoPro. Mm -hmm. So had some mobile app um, editing tools and stuff. So Adobe felt like a, a natural fit or segue. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Great Happy work, by the way. I mean, I mean, uh, obviously we hired her to do the team, <laughs> and we're very excited that she did. Actually, I think I even like made the pitch in New York. We just happened to both be in New York at the same time, and just to like, I was like, we really, really would love to have you come and join the team. And she's been doing amazing work uh, since then. So, it's thanks for fun. joining us. Yeah. So, tell me a little bit uh, about maybe how you, uh, how do you think more broadly about design? Like, what is, what are you? Yeah, how do you, what do you think, what do you, how do you, how would you define like what, what you do? What is, what is it you, that you do here? Like, it's hard. I'm not sure I use a single way to describe it depending on who I'm talking to. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I'm not sure people understand sometimes still. <laughs> I love, I love that chance to like reiterate it though and like yeah. think through it in real time. Yeah. So don't, don't feel on the spot at all. But yeah, like, like, like how do you approach design? Like what do you, what's important to you when it comes to design? Um, and what things are you trying to, yeah, what, what are you bringing to the table every day and things that you find are important about like what it is you do? Like, what yeah. do you like about it? I mean, what I love about what we do is taking really complex um, concepts and trying to make them really simple for people. Yeah. And uh, creating, you know, easier ways for people to do things that have been really complicated in the past. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I feel like we do a good job of that at XD. It's why I joined the team. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah. <laughs> that's, that's nice. I mean, so, yeah. I mean, it's, it's I think you know. Hopefully, ideally, the job that you have reflects yeah. kind of your priorities and how yeah. you like to work and approach it. So, yeah, I'm glad that 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 just happened to work out that way. So yeah, <laughs> excellent. Uh, well, you know, I ask you because today, you know, we're going to be re re uh, reviewing some portfolios, mm -hmm. um, and I think um, you know, whenever I sort of look at someone else's work, you know, I'm. Uh, it actually does give me a chance to really think about my work, mm -hmm. think about my priorities as a designer. Um, you know, when when you know we went through the process of of reviewing your work and seeing your work, and of course the process of of actually like um, you know hiring you and, and getting you to come and join the team. You know, we really were looking for um, someone who who we saw that reflection mm -hmm. of you know sort of our approach and kind of the the way that we approach work. Mm -hmm. And you know, usually when you're putting together a portfolio, like you have in mind, like, who do I want to work for? And the first step in designing a really designing a portfolio is really thinking about, you know, what your priorities are and the people and the work that you want to be doing. And then you sort of craft your portfolio to sort of tell that story. Yeah. You know, and I think that's kind of like, you know, foundation and kind of like when I first sort of, you know, start looking at portfolios, I, I, I'm looking for those kind of qualities. So today, you know, hopefully, like, um, definitely everyone, like, ask us questions. Again, we're going to be kind of, again, looking at some great work today um, and really trying to dig in kind of like, and you know, it'll be there kind of like how we think about design and how we think about UX design and some of that sort of found, forms probably the foundation for a lot of the feedback that we're going to be giving uh, today. So, uh, but if you guys have any, any questions, you want us to go deeper on a topic, let us know. Um, let's see what's going on here in the chat. Um, Jan, thank you very much. It's always nice to you guys are always so complimentary. Uh, Kevin, uh, how's it going? We are in SF. So we do have an office in New York and we do have some of our team members on the XD team there um, in New York. But uh, Hillary and I are based here in San Francisco in our beautiful brand new building uh, on Hooper Street. Um, yeah, so Tom, how's it going? What's going on today? Um, Hillary, are you on? Do you have a Behance portfolio? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, you, uh, yeah. You know, like one thing about Behance, maintaining a great portfolio. Yeah. It's a. It's it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. Yeah. 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 Um. I mean that that's inter Like, that's a good question. Maybe just uh, the sort of a tangent. Like, mm -hmm. when do you think about your portfolio, and when do you work on your portfolio? Are you like? I usually work on my portfolio when maybe I'm feeling a little bored. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I think it, it gives me like the ability to reflect on my work, kind of take a look at what I've done, what mm -hmm. I've accomplished, and maybe where I want to go. Mm -hmm. um, and then obviously when you feel like you're ready for a new job. But, mm -hmm. but I'm, I've never been really good at keeping consistent with it. Uh, me as well. Yeah. <laughs> if you guys all go check out my Behance portfolio, those projects are a little old. Yeah. I love them all, but I I definitely haven't 
paid attention to it for a while. Uh, but the, you know, Behance is this great place where I think I think one thing about like the web is that um, and, and portfolios is it, it's it, they really are utilized not only to I think to get jobs but also to to as a way to like I said like kind of use it to think about your yeah. work and how you present it you know is really important mm -hmm. um, of course to for yourself and your own process but, but for others who are out there and looking to sort of you yeah. know, be inspired or make connections um, and I think that's that's kind of you know one thing that I love about the Behance platform is it really has all this amazing work sort of curated kind of in one place and this is an amazing platform for for designers to to show their best work yeah. You know? So even though I don't update my portfolio a lot, I do like looking at other people's. I think it it is super fun to like go in and get inspiration for things that like I could be doing better mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. and, and things like that. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate those who update theirs more often. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it looks like Kevin. Kevin, you're actually like here in the Hooper building. Um, yes, yeah, Kevin, you're on the second floor. We're on the second floor. <laughs> We should connect. We'd love. We of course we we talk about XD all day long. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, if you, uh, you he's he's in DVA. So uh, yeah. All right. We'll we'll catch up later. Yes, it's, it's <laughs> Andrew product. Shorten, of course, our director of product management, my my uh, partner in crime, has joined us. Andrew, I think it's the first time I've seen you in the chat today. Thanks for joining us. Uh, of course, if you guys have any questions, there's no better person to ask than Andrew here in the chat today. So definitely, definitely ask him some questions while he's here. Um, maybe he'll even uh, clue you in on some some features that we're working on. <laughs> but yes, that's true. We are very busy uh, on XD. In fact, Hillary just came right from a meeting um, as well. So um, all right, should we dive into it? Are you guys ready for some portfolio reviews? Um, yes, Josefina, like you definitely like it's so hard to keep up with portfolios. Uh, let's all commiserate yeah. and how hard that is uh, and be inspired by these amazing portfolios that we're going to be looking at today. Um, so first off, I just wanted to call out, and I don't know if uh, you, uh, everyone knows this, but actually Behance just just launched a redesign and sort of refresh of um, of your uh, sort of the profile pages and the product and the project views for Behance. And of course, we're going to be seeing that in action today. So that's kind of cool. I just wanted to sort of call that out. If you guys want to go check out uh, Will Allen's latest blog post on that. Uh, oh, actually, R, uh, did R, yep, who wrote this? Oh, I don't, I'm not seeing that here, but you guys should go check it out. Uh, go update your update your profiles on Behance. Some cool new features there, so. Um, all right, so today, uh, so we have um, a um, our creative, I think Paco is the creative challenge Slack. Yep. Yeah. So th that's where we got the portfolios from. I want to. So. Yeah, I have to, I have to believe so. So um, I don't know if you guys know, but we do a daily creative uh, UX challenge, and we actually have a Slack. And so all of our uh, portfolios today are coming from submissions on that Slack channel. So if you'd like to have your uh, portfolio maybe queued up for the next time we do this, um, go check out the daily challenge page, and there's a link to join the Slack. You should go check it out. Next week. Yeah, yeah. Next uh, daily challenge starting next week, actually Monday. So if you guys are interested in, in uh, taking the challenge along with everyone, uh, go join the Slack, check out the challenge, and then when we do, we're going to be doing some cool stuff there for the streams. So, um, so here we are today. We have um, our first pr uh, portfolio is from Ramon. Uh, I don't know if Ramon has joined us today, but here we are um, checking out kind of his Behance portfolio. I'm going to go into full screen mode here. Cool. All right, so. Here we are. Um, of course, uh, you know, all the new features you should go check out. You can actually add a new banner image here if you want on the Bands portfolio, I noticed. So here's Ramon's work. Looks like he's got he's got quite a bit of work. So he, he's definitely uh, been doing this for a bit. Mm -hmm. um, looking looking great. Um, Lada looks like very focused on sort of app design, UX design. Um, it's nice that he's sort of calling out kind of here at the top. Um, looks like there's a link to his site as well, and yeah, looks like he's been doing uh, doing really well. Um, looks like doing some work in XD, which is of course always great to see. <laughs> um, I don't know any any thoughts here on kind of the organ like you're using Behance as a platform, mm -hmm. and of course this is you know you're gonna it's really sort of you know, a, a, a holder for all that great work, um, but even from that you can get kind of a, a sense kind of overall. Yep. Uh, kind of of the experience and kind of what are you anything kind of coming to mind anything you're noticing here as we're looking kind of yeah. browsing through Ramon's work at a high level yeah I mean from 
a, a, my immediate look, I can tell super strong visuals. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so I kind kind of get a feel of what kind of designer you are, mm -hmm. which is awesome. I, and I love some of the illustration work as well, and yeah. I wonder if that's um, kind of kind of his work as well. It looks like I don't know if he listed it as an illustrator, but there's some great uh, sort of pictorial illustration work, sort yeah. of supporting a lot of the UX work here as well, which of course is is always uh, a plus. Yeah. It's um, <laughs> Eric mentioning already the dribbler connection, <laughs> possibly. Um, yeah. So there definitely is a lot of work here. Mm -hmm. And do you, so when, when you are, let's say, you know, as, as if you were to review portfolios, mm -hmm. um, is it better to have a lot of work in your portfolio or is it better to to have less work? Like what, where do you kind of land on that? Yeah, I mean, I hear that a lot. And I think for me, it kind of just depends on the kind of designer you are. Uh -huh. So like when I look at this portfolio, I mean, I immediately think, you're super visual. And I feel like showing a breadth of work is always important for mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. to show kind of um, the range of work you can do. Mm -hmm. um, someone who's a bit more strategic thinker, I tend to focus and do longer projects mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, to kind of show m more of my thinking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yeah, I, th I think um, that's kind of one thing I was kind of thinking yeah. up front as well is that um, you know there are a lot of projects here on Ramon's site that that are similar. Yeah. Um, just from a visual standpoint, uh, you know, um, I think what you want to do is is tell is have a really clear story yeah. around each, and the like more less is more, yeah. right? Less is more in a lot of ways. Where um, you know if you have an iPhone project um, kind of next to another iPhone project those two might kind of cancel each other out mm -hmm. that you might not again you're you're really using uh, kind of the in, in this case the behance sort of uh, profile page mm -hmm. to really again sort of tell a story and get people to sort of focus because if yeah. you know if i'm a hiring manager and i'm coming here and you know i'm looking at a lot of portfolios and i have maybe a couple minutes to look at yours yeah you know what is it that you want me to mm -hmm. to take away from that you know, because this is a more kind of in-depth sort of uh, scene here where you and I are going to go, we're going to dig deep, right? We're going to scroll down here. We're going to look at sort of the breadth of work. Mm -hmm. But, you know, Ramon, if you have a project um, that really shows off your strengths or something that you're really kind of, uh, you really want someone to focus on, you know, if it's down here at the bottom, you know, there's a good chance that someone actually may never see it. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm thinking maybe even like this, this pay with PayPal yeah. sort of exploration. Right, uh, I'm immediately kind of drawn to it, but I don't know if I would would see it because it it's so far down mm -hmm. on the page, and you know that's an area where you know you really are looking at your portfolio as a yeah. design project, and that's one of the things you want to think about is like, how are people going to be viewing this? Are they going to be viewing this on a desktop? Are they yeah. going to be viewing it on their phone? Uh, how much time will they spend here? You know, what are the? How can I use the platform of the web to tell the story that I'm looking to tell? That's an interesting point. I think sometimes with um, these kind of portfolio sites, it can be hard to kind of, if you scroll back up yep. to the top, you yep. can see a lot of the work looks similar. And that's mm -hmm. probably because, you know, it's been posted around the same time, probably mm -hmm. working on on similar, you know, types of work. If, mm -hmm. if you're at one job or working on one job, um, they may be kind of similar. So it could, it could potentially be hard to kind of curate that. Mm -hmm. But, um, but yeah, I think that's a that's a great point. Yeah, you know, design is all about making choices, yeah. right? And I think um, you knowing when to edit. Yeah. Both yourself uh, and the and the project you're working on. Yeah. Um, and I, but I think again, the, the, that being said, I there is a, there is a plus to uh, I think in the in the sort of more kind of like social yeah. design sharing, there is a plus to volume yeah. in certain ways. Yeah. But I think even then you want to be thinking very carefully about the story you're telling yeah. as well, kind of at all times. Yeah. So again, I think the breadth of work here is really impressive. Mm -hmm. I think that if I, if Ron, you know, if, if you were going, if you're on sort of, you know, listening along here that, that I would say is that um, if you are applying for a job and you might use the Behance link as something that you're going to be sending along, I would definitely look at like curating this down and actually really looking hard at the projects uh, that, you, that you and the things that you want people to focus on the story that you want to tell. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Uh, so uh, Darni, uh, I hope I said your name correctly. Um, she asks, uh, do you view portfolios on phones? 
It's a good question, and it's it's an interesting one because it brings up the point, do you make your portfolio responsive? Mm -hmm. And um, I have a lot of empathy for, <laughs> for us and having to curate our portfolios. So I don't think I would personally hold it against someone for not making a super mobile-friendly portfolio. I know we're all busy and portfolio is not our first job, mm -hmm. but that's a personal opinion. <laughs> I, I think the reality uh, is that I think you 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 can't account yeah. anymore for for where someone might that's be true. seeing it, and uh, or at least you can't guess. They may be viewing it. You're just going to assume that they're going to be viewing on any possible de number of devices. And I think that's actually one of the pluses of Behance, right? If you're yeah. not a developer. Uh, and you're not developing kind of your own site, you can rely on a platform like Behance yeah. uh, that has a, a mobile layout. Yeah. So, and, they're re and the Behance team, I know, is really making sure that your work looks great yeah. on any device. Yeah, um, that is one of the bonuses. It's right? completely, yeah. 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 So, uh, yeah. So, I think, you know, that that's, yeah. Go update your Behance portfolio. <laughs> that they'll be mobile ready. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, let's let's choose one of these to dive in here um, and maybe give Ramon some feedback. Again, I think you know Ramon. There's a really strong visual style. There's some really amazing sort of like illustration chops. And so even from this level, I think that we can kind of assess that mm -hmm. and say like visual skills looks good. Yeah. Right. Um, also, I love that he's providing some of his XD files for users to download for free. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, I love seeing that kind of sharing, and I think other designers really appreciate that when um, you know they can really draw inspiration and probably learn a lot about how yeah. you created that. And I think uh, that's a really a high level. That's a quality that that I really appreciate yeah. like in designers. Uh, like when I'm in, either you know, interviewing them for a job, you know, part of our our role as designers and particularly working with teams is yeah. to help you know both mentor and help sort of teach and help provide feedback and help bring everybody along together. And I think that that that's a really good signal to me. Yeah. Um, yeah, which one, which one of these should we dive into here, Hillary? Anything catching your eye? Mm. There was one up a little bit. This one's interesting. Mm, all right, let's go to the Empty States app screen. Let's oh. go check it out. So it looks like this one Focused a little more on on the illustration. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's probably why I was drawn to it. Yep, yep, <laughs> yep. I mean, you know, like the design of the thumbnail. Yeah, super important. Yeah, right. <laughs> like what 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 belongs there. Yeah. Yeah, but here, you know, again, like this. Um, it, it this is kind of it. Mm -hmm. You know, the thumbnail. Uh, that's you know. Yeah. That's about all that was there in that yeah. one. Um, so I don't know, to to you is that I mean a plus or, or a minus? Like what what would you like? What kind of how could uh, Ramon make this better yeah. for this type of work that spot illustration, um, you know, really focused on the vignette of like an, an onboarding experience. Yeah. You know, I, you know, now that, that we've clicked on it, it, it brings back up the question of like editing down like the posts that you put on here and mm -hmm. like what did you want uh, what did we expect to get from it and i mm -hmm. guess you know for us diving into one to talk about it wasn't the best to click on mm -hmm. which maybe brings the question of did it need to be in here mm -hmm. yeah um so maybe one with more breath would be mm -hmm. um the right post. I agree. Or, yeah. I agree yeah. yeah and i i also think maybe even you could do a case study on I really wrap this as part of a larger story around onboarding yeah. and around the role of illustration. Yeah. You know, I think that, uh, you know, Ramon, if you took that piece and combined it with maybe a similar piece that mm -hmm. sort of, again, and you could you could sort of fold it into your thoughts on onboarding kind of overall, yeah. uh, I think that would make a really more compelling story yeah. than sort of each one on its own. Yeah. Now that might impact the number of likes. Yeah. And that's like totally valid. I don't want to like <laughs> dis, 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 you know, do to little like dislikes uh, and the role of likes yeah. uh, on your, on the sort of visibility of your portfolio uh, in this algorithmic platform based world. Yeah. So definitely want to acknowledge that. But I think when it comes to sort of, if you were to sort of present this to a possible sort of hiring manager, yeah. I think they would be looking, at least I would be looking for something yeah. a little more like, what's your thought process? How does this connect to other types of work in your portfolio? And, you know, is this something where you have kind of a take or an opinion on kind of you know, onboarding and the role of illustration yeah. overall? Yeah. Yeah. 
There was one I, I think that was like about shipping that I think told a little bit more of a story. Um, cool. But I think maybe this just was like a single web page layout. I'm wondering if maybe some of the the posts yeah. with multiple like screens in yeah. them. Yeah, let's would go check be, it out. Yeah. Oh, scooter app. Cool. Nice. So showing a big, a little more breadth of the experience. Mm -hmm. But this was, I think, I wonder if this was for an XD Daily Challenge. You know, this is one of the ones that we did recently. Was mm -hmm. a was a ride sharing app. So it looks like there was the, it's almost sort of, mm -hmm. I mean, I like here that this is sort of wrapped up in a larger sort of project, like the project is designed as mm -hmm. well as the designs within the project. Mm -hmm. I think that's really nice. So yeah, has maybe some other elements of, maybe this is the web. It's like an app download page. Mm -hmm. yeah. And this is nice too, sort of like, you know, pulling out the illustrations mm -hmm. and giving them kind of their own focus mm -hmm. kind of in, in the project layout. Now, I think it shows the breadth of like possibilities here, like clearly able to work on um, marketing stuff as well as app screens. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah. Yeah, nice. Cool. So cool. So I think Ramon, we're gonna you had some more to review here, but I think the overall uh, our feedback would be to take a look at kind of holistically like all the work you have posted here, and really. I uh, said where possible, really, I think, edit to make sure that um, when people come here that they're getting the story that, that you want them to take away. And uh, of course, you know, uh, Behance will take care of all the responsive sort of uh, aspects of, of showing, showcasing your work to the best possible way um, and, and really focus on the story that you want someone to come away from your portfolio with. And I think that would really, really make this stronger. Because, I mean, great, great visuals. Yeah. Super. Great skills on display. Um, yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right, nice. All right, I was gonna say hi to a few people here in the in the stream. Zaryeb, nice to see you as well again. Richard, how's it going? Um, yeah, how are you guys doing? You guys uh, have any? You guys designing anything cool right now? Feel free to to hit us up on Twitter and share it. We love seeing your work as well. Um, all right, so the next one here, and again, we on the on the Slack channel, on the creative uh, Slack, the creative challenge Slack channel. We kind of have a range of people on there from um, you know, more advanced users like uh, Ramon, more advanced designers like Ramon. Uh, and we also have beginners, you know, mm -hmm. people who are just getting into um, you know, design, um, particularly for screen or for you know, UX and UI design. And so here we have um, Adenahai, Adenahai. <laughs> Man, I'm, I'm just killing it. <laughs> um, <laughs> we're going to be checking out uh, his work here on the Behance page. Looks like he's just getting going uh, from Nigeria. Actually, it's a really mm. big design scene happening in Nigeria. Cool. Um, yeah. So, awesome. uh, all right. So here, again, uh, I think we're going to be focusing maybe our feedback because it looks like um, Denahai is, is, is pretty new at the oh. game. So let's go and check it out. Which one should we dive in and uh, check out here first? I th I'm coming from hardware. I'm excited about the watch. The watch? Should we go check out the watch? <laughs> yeah. All right, the music player for the watch. Let's go check it out. It's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Really nice presentation. You know, showing your design kind of in context. You know, with with the device. Yeah, showing that you can work on multiple um, surfaces, mm -hmm. not just mobile or desktop. Is a huge plus. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, talk about the maybe uh, you, kind of your experience with with um, you presenting your work in the context of hardware. Yeah. Like what what are the challenges there? What are the or, and then, like what are some of the best practices? Do you think when it comes to showcasing your work in that way? Um, so I think I mean part, part of working on hardware was always super fun because hardware can be really sexy. So being able to put your stuff into it makes for really beautiful shots. So mm -hmm. you're already like at an advantage there. Um, but I mean, obviously designing for hardware is super challenging. So, um, you know, I mean, just playing with the with the watt, with the Apple Watch before, like there's only so much you can do on a screen. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you really need to prioritize and you really need to be able to design, um, you know, so that you can see all the controls, you can interact with all the controls. And so, um, it's going to be really simple and people may have a lot of questions about, you know, how interactions work and they really just have to work intuitively. So um, I like here that, you know, you're showing off the hardware, but I can also really clearly see the UI. So I can, I can see 
how you're thinking about those things in the shot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think um, you, there is a there is that um, that danger, right, yeah. to almost rely too heavily on the sexy hardware shot. Yeah. Um, how did how did you try and like what what were some of your strategies to overcome that like? Like I think here, what's kind of nice is that there's both kind of the, the sexy product shot, but then there's something that really focuses in on the design itself. Yeah. Um, what other ways could elevate your design and, and really drag, you know, yeah. pull someone's focus, you know, yeah. in on that? I I kind of liked to start with some of these like more interesting shots, kind of product shots, when I was going through a project, and then as I dove deeper into the project, I actually just removed the product, the hardware completely, and mm. just focused mm -hmm. on the screen, mm -hmm. um, and then uh, you know kind of showed um, what you know dive deeper into what some of those interactions are, you know how how you move within the screen to how you solve some of the problems for working on such a small surface. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that would be kind of exactly what I was thinking too as well as I think, and I think maybe this looked like this has started as a challenge. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think that, you know, like for Adena, Aiden and I, uh, if he was to sort of take this further, um, you know, like a hiring manager, uh, you know, hiring even a junior UX designer, I think would want to see uh, kind of more states of this experience, exactly. um, right? More versions, more of the flow, like through this music playing app, mm -hmm. you know, on 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 the Apple Watch, yeah. right? And so I think at least a handful of states to show the progression, to show the flow, mm -hmm. would be super important, mm -hmm. kind of as that next level, right. like of this of this design. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, nice, very cool. All right, and let's, let's go check out. Let's go check out this weather application. I think there's something kind of interesting here where um, the thing that kind of drew me to this one to sort of click on was uh, seeing the design and the UX experience across different devices. Yeah. Right? Um, and of course, that's, that's as we were just talking about how someone might view your portfolio. Um, oh, thanks, Matthias. Great to see you, man. <laughs> Take it easy. Um, yeah, we'll see you next week. Uh, thanks for staying up there in, in, uh, in, in Europe. So. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so I think you know, again, like we pe people, I think I think users kind of demand that that level of universal access, mm -hmm. right? And then it's important to then have accounted for in your your in your design in some way. Mm -hmm. And I think we used to talk about this as mobile first, mm -hmm. um, and I think now it, it's it, it's it's part of what's built into UX, UI, and product design is that it's multi-device, it's multi-platform. Um, and yeah, the, the, I don't know. Did you get your thoughts on that, and like how you approach maybe, and uh, said, like, and how you would show off like mm -hmm. something like this? Yeah. Well, what I like about this is actually similar to what I was kind of talking about about the watch. Is it it shows your um, your thinking on how you might scale this down, and what information is important from a large screen to a to a mobile device, yeah. and how you prioritize um, those things. And so, yeah, I think. You've done a really good job here in that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, and super important, you know. Uh, I mean, you know, XD, we run into this challenge every day. You know, we have, um, you know, we have the Mac app, we have the Windows app, we have an iPhone app, mm -hmm. uh, we have the experience on the web. So not only are we sort of like, you know, the XD experience across all those platforms, but also, you know, different parts of the workflow and different mm -hmm. parts of the ecosystem. Yeah. So this is kind of a challenge that we sort of face every day, you know, as we think about, you know, like sharing workflows, for right. example, right? Like how they go from the desktop to the full creation app, you know, onto the web, and then have people start to interact with them there. Um, you know, we really, I mean, we have to think about all of that yeah. at the same time mm -hmm. and really think about our designs and show them a stretch across all these uh, all these different surfaces. Yeah. Yeah, it's a big challenge. But yeah. I think, you know, uh, again, uh, Aiden and I, this is a really, I think, again, this is a great start. And I think yeah. it's really, as you progress in your career, I think it's all about that next level, mm -hmm. you know, showing more states of the experience, um, maybe even showing, um, Another device, yeah. you know, and, and like I think that's 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 really important as a hiring manager would be looking at and assessing kind of your work, um, is showing that you're thinking about how this uh, this design and this, these interactions stretch across these right. different surfaces. I think is, is a great start. Yeah. So, yeah. Really nice. All right. Excellent. 
All right, so I have I, uh, I chose a little bit of a curveball um, here uh, because uh, I wanted to use it as a chance to maybe talk about not just about UX design because mm -hmm. I uh, I started my career as just more of a, a, a I guess what you now call a more traditional design pursuit yeah. you know um, graphic design uh, as some might might say uh, even though I always hated those labels yeah. and you know I think there's <laughs> I think there's there's design uh, and there's you know, there's designers and it's really up to either kind of their goals and priorities or the clients that they mm -hmm. want to work with and the jobs they want to pursue. Mm -hmm. um, they should be able to take those skills and apply them to any medium. Yeah. Uh, so I think there's a lot to learn and actually something here I wanted to sort of what I really liked about Aisha's um, uh, portfolio here was just the breadth of the different types of work. Even though there's a lot, not a lot here yeah. and I think Aisha's pretty new to her career. Um, there's a real breadth of, of design application mm -hmm. that I liked about this. That I really felt like, you know, in contrast to like Ramon's mm -hmm. portfolio, really deep, huge bench of work to choose from. Right. But uh, again, Aisha here is showing her skills applied to many different projects, yeah. which I really liked at a high level. Yeah. Yeah. Um, did you have any experience in more traditional design, or did you? Were you like a native like UX UI product design world? Well, you know, my background actually started in architecture. Oh, that's right. Yeah, so um, I don't have a very traditional background, but it wasn't in UX UI. So mm -hmm. it, I came from architecture. It was not as creative as I would have loved it to be, mm -hmm. and I fell into UX UI design from there. Um, which I find creative and I love it. And but you know, it goes to show how a lot of these design fundamentals expand across all mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all different uh, industries. So. Yeah. What what uh, what skills do you think you really carried over with you from architecture into into UX design? It's funny because whenever people ask me like like what's the relation there, the first thing I think about is actually my first project in school as mm -hmm. an architect mm -hmm. where we actually had to cook a meal in our kitchen and then map out the flow of our kitchen oh. and where we went to get our pots and pans, our food. And the final project devolved into designing our own restaurant where you grow your own food and you actually cook the meal and you walk through the restaurant with, and you had to think about customers and, you know, being the cook yourself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and it just relates so well to me. You know, you have, um, you know, as designers, we're designing the app for our customers and thinking about the flow that they take as, as they go through it. So all of those principles we learned and what you have to think about when designing for different kinds of people and, um, you know, take like Uber, you have the driver and you have, you know, the customer. Mm -hmm. um, so all that stuff, I feel like you know, it was super helpful. Totally, I totally agree with you. And you know, there's something in there about, you know, like a kitchen, moving yeah. around a kitchen, mm -hmm. right? I think that, you know, one thing uh, I, I really feel is that, you know, like like we're problem, like humans, like we're problem solvers. Yeah. Like even if something isn't perfect, you know, we'll find a way to make it work because that's what we've got. Yeah. That's what we've got mm -hmm. to, 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 mm -hmm. to work with, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that given, you know, any scenario, mm -hmm. poorly designed kitchen, yeah. poorly designed application, if it has something valuable for us to go and do, we're gonna find a way to do it. Right. Now, does that mean, if I'm successful in making my meal, does that mean my kitchen was well designed or that I was good at getting around the pitfalls like of of that? Exactly. You know? yeah. Well, and it, and it makes you just think about like the way we've done things versus how it could be done too. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, to take different approaches to things and to think outside the box, so. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's definitely, like, I, I, I it really resonates with me, because I think there's something underlying in, like, how I approach, like, you know, design and UX design in particular. It's like, mm -hmm. just because you can do something, yeah. doesn't necessarily mean that that's a good way to get it done. Right. You know, and I'm always really trying to, like, break down, like, get to the heart of the problem that we're trying to solve. Yeah. So we can just make it better, so I can do it you know, I'm. I. I don't want to joke. I, I said this yesterday. I was jokingly said like, I'm lazy. Yeah. I'm a lazy designer. Yeah. But that what that means is like, I hate managing my layers. Yeah. You know, I, I hate that I have to like make group. I have to make groups. Yeah. And I have to like like there are all these little things that I just feel so intently like stop me from actually designing. And that like that's what motivates me to like 
make XD better, <laughs> you know, is that kind of is that kind of thinking, you know? I'm like, how can I do this better? And I'm always trying to tinker with it and really think about it. I think because of my untraditional background to to UX design um, and just you know graphic design stuff like that, using Adobe products, I I didn't wasn't taught the good habits in school, so mm -hmm. I learned everything myself and taught myself. So the things I've that you're talking about are things that like. I didn't even think to care about, yeah. you know? <laughs> and so so it, it kind of shows you, like, I don't feel like, you know, they should be important to us either. Yeah, do yeah, yeah, yeah. And, all right, we'll get back to Aisha. Sorry, Aisha, we got a little tangent there. Yeah. Um, let's go check out one of her projects. What, uh, which one should we go check out first? Uh, you choose. All right, let's do let's do let's do this one. I don't know. I'm kind of interested in in the magazine. Yeah. I, I love. I, I miss the days of designing print, print for my. You know, I'm designing magazines yeah. and you know, print design. So, oh, all right. Well, thriller. This is a lovely visual. Mm -hmm. I mean, I love the colors here. I love the type. I also love that this is kind of like um, kind of the hero shot. Yeah. You know, it's a nice product shot. Very important when you're presenting your work. Right. It needs to be presented well. Mm -hmm. So this would be different. Like I said, like even if she is just if she had just sort of displayed the design mm -hmm. uh, on its own, you know, out of context, like I don't think it would have sold it as yeah. well initially. Yeah, this makes me excited to go and look at more. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, so th this is really nice. So uh, she's really treating it as as a as a case study, really. Mm -hmm. She's really, I think, trying to, to hear to use writing to really describe you kind of the problems mm -hmm. and and kind of the, the why or the what of like what it is she's actually trying to do here. Mm -hmm. Um, also love the variations. Mm -hmm. I, I this is something that I really love seeing in mm -hmm. design portfolios is some of those early evolutions yes. and kind of again this really shows a progression and a sort of and, and process as well. Yeah, and thinking yeah and around thinking, yeah. yeah yeah right even like and then like that next level mm -hmm. as well in, in the process and then the final cover applied to the publication. Mm -hmm. Oh, and then we can, then we can also dive into some of the layouts as well, showing that system across mm -hmm. different layouts. Nice. Yeah. This, I mean, this again. I, I think you know a UX designer or the maybe someone who sort of was was honed in the dribble side of things. Like this is the breadth of of the project that I think it is that you really need to shoot for yeah. when it comes to. Uh, particularly when you're trying to get hired, yeah. right? Um, again, it, it's not just about the high polish of the visuals. It's about how all the pieces fit together, yeah. right? And then, in like, sometimes those pieces can tell a better story than like the really slick hero image. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Yeah. Because um, those hero images can be deceptive. They can be. Yeah, so uh, anything uh, you want to, uh, you were thinking about this one as we were rolling through it? Yeah, no, I know. I love seeing the iterations up here. That's super interesting to me. I don't know. Some people, I feel like I've, I've heard both sides, like mm. that they just want to see the finished product. Mm. Um, but I find most of the places that I enjoy working and have, you know, similar mindset really like to see the process. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I mean, I'm, I might be biased, but I think that like if people are just sort of swung by the end product, yeah. that that there's something wrong. There's yeah. there's something off there yeah. in that to me. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if I'd want to work for, for those yeah. people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I want to say like that's you know like there's a role for that for sure. There's a place for that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely appreciate seeing it the breadth yeah. of thinking. So, uh, let's check out one more real quick. Um, but from that, you know, again, like. Uh, all the UX designers here, I think that they're, if you, and you guys should go check out Aisha's um, uh -huh. page here. I really, again, and the other, and again, really look for and learn lessons from kind of all design disciplines. Um, you know, product designers, I think, you know, people who are designing hardware also really have a breadth usually of, 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 the, of the overall system or yeah. thinking or process that I think is really good to, to sort of learn from, so. Oh, I saw Sam. Sam, our our intern, is is on the stream as well. Good to see you, Sam. How's everybody doing out there? Um, and similar, like looking at the apply again. Like I mean, 
Here's yeah. all the different device sizes, this right? Is awesome. Right? Seeing the system applied in all these different ways, seeing how it changes, yeah. right? She's I and mean, actually she's she's showing that like part of her job as a designer even though she might for the client need to have more kind of, uh, you know, print focused work as well. We also need to see what it's going to look like digitally on yeah. these different platforms. And you can see really clearly from from all of the different versions what information is the most important and how that trickled down to mm -hmm. the smaller version. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, really nice. Oh, she also did some photography for this one as well. That's I got to say that's what I miss the most about yeah. like the design work is that I I was involved in almost every part of the process of the yeah. design studios I worked for. Yeah. So, it's super nice. Super nice. Oh, looking like, really breaking down the system. This is really nice too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice work, Aisha. I think again, yeah. as you continue to progress in your career, I think you've got a lot of great foundations here. Um, I think you know, if anything, I think you know, seeing again, just uh, I think more is just where you're headed, and I think yeah. you'll be in good shape. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Nice projects. Yeah, it's super good. All right. All right. We're gonna move on here. All right, Elba, Elba Sindani. Um, we are gonna be checking out her portfolio. So she's a product designer. She's freelancing right now. She's from. She lives in Lima, Peru. I love. I love seeing just like. I think that was another thing I loved about Behance, even from back in the first days when I when I was first on Behance, is just like, this is a global community, mm -hmm. uh, and being exposed to that as a designer, who of course you get in your little bubbles. Yeah. Um, you know, being pushed and being you know introduced to ideas kind of outside of those bubbles can only make you better. Yeah. You know, so I love I love seeing all the ideas. And it's the same thing with the stream here. Yeah. So, uh, hey, Darina, thanks for for joining us. Uh, no, you did not miss much. She was asking if she missed missed much. Well, I mean, you missed some things. <laughs> I can say I wouldn't say you didn't miss much, but we've been re reviewing reviewing uh, portfolios today mm -hmm. uh, that were submitted via our um, daily creative challenge Slack. And so we're sort of using that, um, you know, as a way to for us to just talk about design, talk about you know, uh, kind of what our priorities mm -hmm. are when it comes to design, when it comes to putting new portfolios or hiring designers as we're mm -hmm. looking at portfolios. Um, so yeah, so here we are checking out Elba's work. Seems like there's a good variety of work mm -hmm. from like app design to you see some up top. I think mm -hmm. there's some more like. E-commerce, maybe in here, so it's just like a breadth of work. Mm -hmm. It's really nice. Yeah. Again, I think that was one of our uh, critiques, kind of in our first portfolio mm -hmm. we reviewed. So I think Elba, you're doing a nice job showing a, a good breadth of, and of projects, quantity and mm -hmm. and variety. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah. I think it's really nice. Um, all right, where should we dive in first here? Mm. You know, one thing I just was thinking about Behance as we're rolling through this too. But again, something that we should all consider mm -hmm. as we're looking at Behance is it, it's chronological. Yes. Some and, and by default, yeah. I think you can organize these afterwards. Right. But uh, I think you know, as of course users were used to the scroll, or used to feeds. Yeah. I think you know, there's an assumption that everything at the bottom is old and everything at the top is new. Mm -hmm. um, so be aware of that. Yeah. Right. Be aware of that. Use that to your advantage. Or at least just be aware and you know, make sure that you understand that and that you're crafting your story here to, to either, again, just, just just be aware of that thing is good good to, good to do. Yeah, totally. Should we do this one? Yeah. The Bella Artificial Intelligence. That sounds fun. That sounds interesting. Oh, yes, I have <laughs> we have the, the, uh, the, the virtual face over mm -hmm. here. Very nice giving. Give him some creepy vibes with his eyes. But yeah, that's that's all right. It feels it feels <laughs> like we're going into the future. Right? We are. Yeah. Here we go. Here we go. All right. So we have um, maybe some branding happening here. Mm -hmm. A little part of the branding story here at the top, mm -hmm. uh, and then some of that in-app experience. Yeah. So now that we're seeing that kind of like branded element of those kind of like overlapping circles of color. Um, that kind of it looks like it's now being used as kind of the main sort of interaction mm -hmm. for the app, sort of front and center. So it's nice kind of set up, mm -hmm. sort of now see that applied. As we go down. Uh, this is, you know, like seeing like maybe um, telling, like a storytelling moment. Yeah. You know, here. Yeah. Kind of setting up like the customer mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. who's using the product. Mm -hmm. And then we have um, 
maybe a dashboard here mm -hmm. now of that as well. So it looks like in, uh, one of the things I found myself is trying to connect the threads here. Yeah. And so, you know, the, one of the things I would probably say here, um, Elba, is, uh, you know, I think if we're having trouble following the thread mm -hmm. of of those first images, you know, now to this to, to the app and now to this dashboard, mm -hmm. um, be aware of that. Like, yeah. you know, re, I think sometimes, again, you can't really account for that viewer to know how or any of the sort of background to your project. So I think sometimes you almost can, you need to over state it. Yeah. You need to really be clear yeah. as you're telling that story mm -hmm. so that you can help those people who have never, never seen this work before. Yeah. You can help them put the pieces together as well because you've got it all up here in your head. And you know, anytime you present work, it's a chance for you to, um, to write that all down. And I yeah. think you can never be too explicit. I think this is, can actually be one of the hardest parts of creating a portfolio is yeah. you know your product so well and you really need to test it on people to see if they understand you know what story you're trying to tell and if you've included all of the right in important parts of it i think that's that's a good way to tell is if you can put it in, in front of someone who's never looked at it before mm -hmm. um, but i think yeah i had the same reaction i think as i'm going through i'm not totally sure what product i'm looking at mm -hmm and what, what, I'm, what story I'm supposed to get. Yeah. But some, it looks beautiful. It does, it does. And I think some of the colors connect to it, but yeah, I think, yeah. you know, like seeing the, some of the branded element here, again, yeah. connecting the story through some key visual elements yeah. can do a lot of that heavy lifting for yeah. you, you know? Um, you know, Hillary, like this is a question because you, you were sort of hinting at it, but yeah. did you have maybe people that you w were kind of like sending your portfolio to ahead of maybe sending it out to like a prospective sort of um, place that you wanted to work at? Like, do you have those trusted people that you... Yeah, that you, absolutely. Yeah. I think having... Uh, and sometimes it is people that know what you're working on, but just having that outside perspective. But I, I had a lot of mentors that I worked with at GoPro and... Mm -hmm. Um, people who, you know, uh, I mean, yeah, maybe people from old jobs or things like that, that, that know your abilities and, um, you know, can give you feedback that you trust. I think that's super important. Mm -hmm. and I think it's super valuable to show. Um, I mean, I'd go even as far as like practicing interviews with people and, and things like that. I think, yeah. you know, and people say, just go to practice interviews before before you go to that one job interview that you really want, you learn something every time, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, anytime I think that you can get your design, I mean, this goes for whether it's portfolios, whether it's your daily yeah. work, anytime you can get that perspective, that trusted perspective, yeah. and, and, and really open yourself up to, to feedback. Mm -hmm. uh, because every time you tell that story and every time you get that feedback, you're gonna make it better. Yeah. You're gonna say it better, you're going to, uh, connect the dots a little better, um, you know, and you're you're you always think want to be pushing yourself in that way. I think feedback is such a critical part of the design process. You know, again, whether it's setting up your portfolio on Behance or whether it's you know sharing your work with a client, um, get those opinions ahead of time. Yeah. Right. And the better you know your story, the more people are going to trust you, and you know. It's the same as going into a meeting and sharing your work. The more mm -hmm. confident you are in, in your stuff, you know, the better it's going to come across. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How'd your meeting go before this, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, this is exactly what I was working on yesterday, like leading up to the meeting was that I was like, if I'm not confident in, in these solutions, then, you know, I don't feel comfortable, you know, presenting them. So we mm -hmm. actually changed the course of our meeting today for that reason. Mm -hmm. It's good. Thanks. Yeah. Good. That's, you know, and, you know Hillary, uh, I mean, she's always great about getting feedback. So, <laughs> uh, yes, pleasure to work with because of that, really. <laughs> um, yeah, this is nice. I mean, I think seeing the breadth here, Elba, is great. I think just connecting the story a little more uh, to, to those who, who aren't very familiar with it, I think will really elevate, mm -hmm. you know, this, this, pro this uh, project page for mm -hmm. sure. All right. All right, anything else we want to remember how we're looking at? Oh, actually, we're, we're getting close to, to the end here. So we maybe we'll just end here with Elba today. Um, yeah, Hillary, I mean, so Hillary, can you tell everybody on the on the channel here what uh, anything about what you're working on right now, or at least hint at 
some of those those things that you're you're interested in right now when it comes to like thinking about like design and how designers work? Um, yeah. Um, well, what am I allowed to share? Uh, so Hillary, <laughs> uh, maybe I'll just sort of yeah. yeah I'll, I'll get it. <laughs> Hillary is really thinking a lot about and would love to hear from any of you about how you keep track of very complex. UI systems mm -hmm. and how they relate to each other. I think one thing, one topic of conversation Hillary and I were talking about was like, you know, how do you like keep track of like all of the button, all the variations of buttons mm -hmm. that uh, your product or service might be, um, you know, uh, using, right? Because mm -hmm. uh, you have, you know, call to action buttons and you have sort of more quiet buttons mm -hmm. and you have, uh, you know, buttons that are actionable and buttons that are disabled, you know, and so Hillary uh, and I have really been talking a lot about about that, like how people actually like design for that mm -hmm. and design for all those states. And then of course, how they might build interactivity across all of those states. Right. Um, so if you guys have any ideas there, uh, I'm sure we'd love to, to hear more about it, but yeah. it's pretty exciting work. Yeah, I'm excited. I can't stop thinking about it, really. Like, it's just, like, <laughs> lodged in the back of my head right now, and Hillary's doing some amazing work on it, and I think we're getting we're getting closer yeah. to, to maybe some, some cool updates coming in the future. So, yeah. um, yes, this is, this, is, this is our gateway to the other dimension back here. Uh, <laughs> I guess Jan was pointing out, he's saying, looks like it's a gateway to another dimension. Yes. <laughs> it's cool. Yes. Um, okay. Yeah, well, that was super, I love, I love just talking about design and, yeah. and thank you for joining me because you're me. just a pleasure to have those conversations with. So, uh, and thank you everyone for joining us here on the stream. Uh, if you guys are liking some of the new stuff that we're doing on the Friday stream, I'd love to hear about it. Or if you'd like to see maybe us cover a different topic. Again, we're trying some new things here in the new year um, with designing Adobe XD here on Fridays. And uh, of course, like we, we just love getting that feedback so we can make it better next time. So thanks everybody for joining us. <laughs>